lesson is focusing on lesson 12, chronological order. So the goal of this lesson is to take your narrative event that you have selected, and then you're going to start listing some of the key events that occur in your narrative uh, chosen event. Okay, so we're going to dive straight in. Um, we're kind of looking at this chronological order assignment kind of similar to that of a plot chart. So I'm going to be referring and referencing to a plot chart through this particular lesson. So your first part or section is the topic. So you need to state the topic of your essay. You should have chosen your topic uh, from lesson eight under uh, the planning lesson. And now we are going to take that topic and fully start developing the events that occur. So with the term chronological, we wanna make sure that we are actually paying attention to the fact that we are putting our events into timeline um, format, meaning that the first thing that happens you put first, the middle thing that happens you put in the middle, the last thing that happens you put at the end. All right, that's really important. If you mix up your events, it's gonna be very confusing to the reader. So when we say chronological order, that means we're putting it into a proper timeline order, all right, in the event of those events that you experience. So write your topic, the beginning, Middle, end, exposition, climax, resolution. So when referring to a plot chart, that's how this kind of works out with a narrative essay. So as you note that this format is very different than that of what we have done with academic writing, such as argumentative writing or um, exposition or, or explanatory writing. So what narrative writing does is it breaks the boundaries of your formulaic academic writing. So instead of having an introduction, three body paragraphs, and a conclusion, we instead have a beginning, a middle, and an end. And these are kind of like chunks of your essay. So instead of forcing you to write one paragraph, that's the introduction, we chunk the introduction and we kind of call it the beginning. So that means you could take between one to three to even maybe four or five paragraphs for your beginning. Honestly, I'd probably recommend between one and four paragraphs being your beginning. All right. Um, so it's just the things that occur toward the beginning of your story. The middle can range between one to five to seven to eight paragraphs long. All right. And that is what happens right in the middle of your essay. And then you have the end that can range between one to four paragraphs as well as to what happens at the end. So when we kind of look at a plot chart, the beginning of your essay might happen at the exposition toward the first part of the rising action. The middle of your essay, which typically is the longer portion, happens toward the later half of the rising action, the main climax, and then the beginning part of the falling action. And then your end could be the later half of the falling action and then your final resolution, okay? So when referencing to a plot diagram or a plot map, uh, that is kind of how uh, the sections of your narrative essay relate. So the exposition to the first part of the rising action is the beginning, the later part of the rising action, the climax, and the beginning part of the falling action is the middle. So there's more information in there, more sections. So naturally that's gonna be the, your bigger portion of your essay. And then the later half of the following action, and then the resolution is your ending. Okay? So that's how we kind of chunk the narrative essay. So what you do is you write down the events that occur in your narrative event in a chronological order. So the first thing that happens, you can put here. Then the next thing that happens, and the third thing that happens. So maybe you go to Hawaii. Okay. Uh, we pack. We head to the airport. And we get on the plane to Hawaii. We arrive at Hawaii. We move into the hotel. We go on our first um, trip or event in Hawaii, which is scuba diving. Uh, we put on the scuba gear. We go scuba diving and we see a sea turtle. And then maybe I put even in a sixth one that says that, you know, I swim with the sea turtle. And then maybe I do another one that says, um, you know, some of the other things that you see when scuba diving. All right. Then you move into the end. We get done with that scuba diving trip 
and you start reflecting on how awesome it was, maybe a lesson that you learned to, you know, live life to its fullest and really appreciate the moments uh, when they are given to you, and then that's what you put in your resolution, okay? And then lastly, the theme is your lesson, the lesson that is learned in your narrative story. So this lesson can be as large and grandiose as some sort of philosophical lesson, you know, dawning realization moment of yours, or it can be a very small lesson that we all can relate to. But the key thing that I want you to realize is that the theme cannot be text specific. So meaning, I don't want my theme to be of, you know, go swim with a turtle so you can live life to its fullest. That is way too specific because I may not, you know, go swim with a turtle, but I still want to learn the concept of live life to its fullest. So instead of that, maybe I should put, you know, uh, put a theme that talks about, um, you know, appreciate moments as they are given to you, right? And then that's a more of a bigger concept can be applied to multiple situations. So the whole purpose of this lesson is to simply put your events of, to map out your events that occur in your story into chronological order while also identifying the theme. And this is going to help you formulate the order of potentially your paragraphs of your essay, right? Because that's one great way to look at this is the topics that you put here are going to be the topics of each paragraph in your essay, all right? So that is the purpose of the Lesson 12 chronological order. And if you have any further questions, feel free to email me. Talk to you guys later.